Welcome to the 31st Annual Midwest Book Awards, presented by the Midwest Independent Publishers Association. Before we get started with our program, let's hear from some of this year's judges. Did any books stand out to you this year or um, any books in particular you want to talk about and what did you like about them? The Keeping by Linda okay. Neal Reising. I enjoyed it so much and I don't even think that I looked at the back to see that she was a member of the Western Cherokee Nation. But once I found that out, it made me enjoy it even more because, you know, the Midwest is so white, so white male that mm -hmm. to find this jewel of poetry, I loved it so, so much. It's funny, but one of my favorite books was actually Midwest Futures. And in it, he talks about what is the Midwest, you know, which I, I really, it, I th it was very thought provoking because at one point the Midwest was considered Tennessee. So, you know, so he goes over the whole history of how, you know, it, the, the whole idea of the Midwest was developed, both like geographically and also kind of as a social construct. So I found the book, I thought it was a really, really interesting book. I put these in a similar category because they both look at um, the people of significance in the Midwest often live quiet lives, but have major impact in whatever their field is. It's, it's kind of funny in a way that they're both on Wisconsin, but I, I view them as being real similar in the approach of emphasizing the Midwest. There were so many good ones. There was one category where I, I actually remember thinking, I have to pick three and I've got a stack of five or six here and they are all award worthy. We know the voice of the Midwest is very important and this was brought home to us into the world this past year and I think it's really important that we support Midwestern authors and Midwestern publishers. And now, your host for the evening, Jennifer Baum, Chair of the Midwest Book Awards and founder of Scribe Publishing in Detroit, Michigan. Suzanne Kelly, President of MIPA, the Midwest Independent Publishers Association and publisher at the North Dakota State University Press in Fargo, North Dakota. And me, Paul Nylander, Vice President of MIPA and also proprietor of Minneapolis, Minnesota-based Illustrata Design. Jennifer, are we ready? Let's get started. Welcome to the 31st Annual Midwest Book Awards, recognizing titles published in 2020. I'm Jennifer Baum, Executive Director of the Midwest Independent Publishers Association, or MIPA. The Midwest Book Awards has been organized by MIPA since 1989. And today, MIPA exists as a vibrant regional association that serves the publishing community in the Midwest with networking opportunities and resources for new and seasoned publishers. MIPA meets monthly online on the second Tuesday evening of each month from September to May to discuss topics such as marketing titles, hosting author events, working with distributors, getting books into libraries, and more. Membership is free for publishers and author publishers within our 12-state region, and our next Zoom meeting is September 14th and features a speaker from Ingram Spark. I hope to see you there. Now I'd like to introduce my friend and colleague, Dr. Suzanne Kelly, editor at North Dakota State University Press and MIPA's president. Suzanne? Hello, thank you and welcome everybody. We're so glad to be here. When we made the shift to digital programming last year, there were a lot of unknowns. Now we know the wonderful side effect of connecting virtually is that our community is growing and it's truly regional. 
Allow me to briefly update you on how MIPA is doing as an organization, because there are some great things happening. Last year, we made membership free, and in the coming program year, we will continue to offer free membership to publishers within our 12-state region. We just launched a beautiful new website with increased functionality for members, including a classified section, updated member directory, and more. We have four new board members joining our board of directors in July, and their diverse publishing experience is going to bring a wealth of knowledge to MIPA and to its members. So well, we welcome them and we thank them for taking on a service role with the organization. We will be back with more programming on the second Tuesday of September, including sessions on Ingram Spark and working directly with book printers. Make sure to sign up for MIPA's email list to get all the free Zoom links to our monthly programming, which resumes when? That's the second Tuesday in September. So we hope to see you there. If you like MIPA's new programming, please consider supporting us with a donation. Your contribution will support future programming and growth. And you can do that very simply at mipa.org slash donate. And Maddie is going to put that link into the chat room just to make it really convenient for you. Before we get started with our awards presentation, we will take a moment to recognize and honor our dear friend and colleague, Sybil Smith. Sybil has played important leadership roles with MIPA for decades, ever since the first meeting. Sybil's current role on the board is immediate past president, and this year she chose to retire from her MIPA, her MIPA duties. Let's take a look at this brief video to learn more about Sybil and her publishing career. Sybil Smith is one of the founding members of MIPA and has been writing, publishing, and teaching publishing for decades. When you ask her MIPA colleagues, they will tell you that Sybil is generous, kind, a good listener, and curious about everything. She first started publishing fishing guides in 1982 and quickly became regarded as an expert on fishing in Minnesota lakes. The first edition of her book, The Twin Cities Fishing Guide, sold over 80,000 copies. Sybil founded Smith House Press in 1994 to publish quality books on health and healing, and its debut title, The Fibromyalgia Help Book, sold over 150,000 copies. In 1977, she was one of the founders of Women Anglers of Minnesota, an organization that today provides women of all ages fishing opportunities for walleye, bass, northern pike, and panfish. This year, Sybil received the great distinction of being only the second woman ever inducted into Minnesota's Fishing Hall of Fame in the Individual Legends category. Sybil grew up in Chicago and learned to fish from her father when she was just a girl. When she eventually moved to the Twin Cities, there were so many lakes she thought she died and went to heaven. Thank you, Sybil, for your contributions to independent publishing, commitment to publishing education, and decades-long service to MIPA and its members. Thank you, Sybil, for your service, your commitment, your friendship. Uh, we appreciate all that you've done with MIPA and independent publishing. And now, let's get to the main event. Let's start our awards presentation. In the category of anthologies, we have two finalists. 
Country Views, The Essential American Commentaries of Zachary Michael Jack from Ice Cube Press. And Education for Democracy, Renewing the Wisconsin Idea, University of Wisconsin Press. And the winner is Education for Democracy, Renewing the Wisconsin Idea by Chad Allen Goldberg, published by University of Wisconsin Press. Congratulations to Chad and University of Wisconsin Press. In the category of arts, photography, coffee table books, we have three finalists. Hazel Belvo, A Matriarch of Art, published by Afton Press. Our Gay History in 50 States, published by Wise Inc. Synthesis, Lost and Found in America, Art of Vesna Kittleson, published by Afton Press. And the gold medalist is our Gay History in 50 States by Zaylor Stout, published by Wise Inc. Congratulations, Zaylor. Would you like to say a few words? I would. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> big thank you to my partner, Or Lindenfeld, for doing all the, all the snow removal during the winter when I was writing this book. I mean, you have to love your partner for that. Um, and to Wise Inc., Dara Beavis, Alyssa, and Victoria for making this book like amazing. Um, they, they were amazing in regards to making this, this, this possible, as well as um, Ryan Chief from um, uh, Mayflower Designs in regards to making this book look so amazing and beautiful. So thank you so much for this, this great honor. Congratulations again. Our next category is autobiography and memoir, and we have three finalists. Grief's Country, a memoir in pieces, published by Wayne State University Press. Sign Here If You Exist and Other Essays, published by Mad Creek Books, an imprint of the Ohio State University Press. And Tending the Valley, a Prairie Restoration Odyssey, published by Wisconsin Historical Society Press. And our winner for this category is Sign Here If You Exist and Other Essays by Jill Sisson Quinn, published by Mad Creek Books, an imprint of the Ohio State University Press. Congratulations, Jill. In our next category, biography, we have one finalist and thus our gold winner, our gold medal winner is Patrick J. Lucy, A Lasting Legacy by Dennis <laughs> Dressang, published by Wisconsin <laughs> Historical Society Press. It sounds to me like, oh, Dennis, maybe you'd like to say a few words. Yes, I would, thank you. This is, this is quite an honor. Uh, it was really uh, a great privilege to have the opportunity to write about Patrick J. Lucy, who was Wisconsin's governor, modernized state government, and presided over the adoption of numerous progressive public policies, the most in the state's history. Um, and thank you to the staff of Wisconsin Historical Society Press for their expert help in helping to tell this story. Thank you. Well done and congratulations again. In our next category, business, we have three finalists and two gold medalists. Our first finalist is The Confidence to Speak, Master the Many Fears of Speaking, published by Kirk House Publishers. Hired, Cut Your Career Search Time in Half, published by Kirk House Publishers. Durable Trades, Family-Centered Economies That Have Stood the Test of Time, published by Front Porch Republic Books. The first of our two gold winners is 
The Confidence to Speak by Sarah Krischer, published by Kirk House Publishers. And Sarah, would you like to say a couple, oh, um, excuse me, Anne Obitz accepting on Sarah's behalf. Yes, thank you so much. Um, I'm Ann Abbots from Kirk House Publishers. The author, Sarah, and I want to express our gratitude to Mikko for this award. Thank you. Thank you, Ann, and congratulations. And our second gold medal winner for this category is Hired, Cut Your Career Search Time in Half by George C. Murray, published by Kirk House Publishers. And George, we invite you to say a few words. Yes, thank you. This is a great honor and I appreciate it. I would like to thank Connie Anderson, my editor, for helping me tell the story um, and helping people in transition land their job faster. It can be a lonely place out there and without a roadmap, which my book provides. And I also want to thank Ann Albitz and the folks at Kirk House Publishing for helping me get my process out to all the people in job transition. Thank you. Thank you, George, and congratulations again. Our next category is children's and young adult nonfiction. We have two finalists. My OIT Journey, How It Worked For Me, published by Beaver's Pond Press. And You Can Change the World, published by Andrews McNeil Publishing. And our winner for this category is You Can Change the World by Lucy Bell, published by Andrews McNeil Publishing. Congratulations, Lucy. Our next category is cookbooks, crafts, and hobbies. We have three finalists. Hungry for Harbor Country, Recipes and Stories from the Coast of Southwest Michigan, published by Agate Publishing Incorporated. Northern Har Harvest, 20 Michigan Women in Food and Farming, published by Wayne State University Press. The Tahini Table, Go Beyond Hummus with 100 Recipes for Every Meal, published by Agate Publishing Incorporated. And our winner for the Cookbooks, Crafts and Hobbies category is The Tahini Table, Go Beyond Hummus with 100 Recipes for Every Meal by Amy Zittelman, published by Agate Publishing Incorporated. Congratulations. In education and learning, we have one finalist and thus one gold medalist. And that is our Gay History in 50 States, Zaylor Stout, published by Wise Inc. Congratulations again, Zaylor. Thank you so much. You know, this, this award means so much, especially this year with uh, 250 bills being brought forward in legislatures trying to deny the rights of LGBT folks. So this means so much to me because LGBT history is American history. And so the fact that this organization has recognized that for this award just means so much to us. Thank you. Thank you, well said. Our next category is family and parenting. We have two finalists, family redefined. Childhood Reflections on the Impact of Divorce, published by Little Creek Press. The Fog Zone, Navigating the Space After Your Diagnosis, published by Beaver's Pond Press. And the winner for this category is Family Redefined, Childhood Reflections on the Impact of Divorce by Kimberly Ewerts, published by Little Creek Press. Congratulations, Kimberly. And I understand you would like to say a few words. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I want to first express my love and appreciation to my husband, Steve, my son, Tony, for their unconditional love and support. I want to thank especially the brave young uh, men and women that allowed me to share their stories, their personal stories, and make this book possible. 
I will be forever grateful to you all. I also thank Kristen Mitchell of Little Creek Press who made this book a reality. Thank you all so much. Thank you for this honor. Thank you. Congratulations. Our next category is health. We have two finalists. The Fog Zone, Navigating the Space After Your Diagnosis, published by Beaver's Pond Press. And My New Kidney and Me, published by Beaver's Pond Press. And our winner in the category of health is The Fog Zone, Navigating the Space After Your Diagnosis, by Deborah Day Laxon, published by Beaver's Pond Press. Deborah, we invite you to say a few words. I am not Deborah. Can you see me? <laughs> um, I would like to uh, thank Mipa on Deborah's behalf. She is trapped in a flood right now and uh, in Iowa, believe it or not. And I'm Lily Coyle. I own Beaver's Pond. Deb would like to thank her family and Beaver's Pond Press. And I'd also like to say congratulations, Greg, for being a finalist. Thank you, Lily. And we're sorry to hear about Deb's circumstance. We're glad you could be here. All right, our next category is regional history. And we have three finalists. Letters to the Chief, a Minnesota childhood published by Wisdom Editions and Imprint of Calumet Editions. Midwest Futures, published by Belt Publishing. And No Place Like Murder, True Crime in the Midwest, published by Indiana University Press. And the winner of this category is Midwest Futures by Phil Chrisman, published by Belt Publishing. And Phil, we understand you're here. Please say a few words. Well, God, thank you all so much. Um, and it was a huge honor and thanks to Belt Publishing. Uh, I wrote Midwest Futures because I wanted to better understand the region's history and future in a moment of runaway climate change. That, If that topic interests you, please read my book. But more importantly, please read up on the current struggle of the Anishinaabe in Wisconsin and Minnesota against Enbridge Line 3. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Phil, and congratulations again. And now a message from Nate Hoffelder providing virtual IT support for authors. Nate's spring cleanup package for WordPress sites includes updating themes and plugins, securing the site, optimizing image sizes, speeding up the site, installing a spam filter, and more. Email nate at natehoffelder.com and mention the Midwest Book Awards for a special rate. I have really enjoyed getting to read off all these titles and to congratulate the winners, um, but I'm going to pass the torch to our Vice President, Paul Nylander, to take up the rest, the next set of categories. Thank you, Suzanne. Um, it's an honor to be here and it's great to see things moving forward. So I'm going to continue with our nonfiction category, starting off with humor, where we have two finalists uh, this year. The Meat and Potatoes of Life, My True Lit Com, published by Elva Risa Publishing. And still laughing, still learning, still looking for a good title. Mostly true stories of family, friends, faith, and foibles, published by Beavers Pond Press. And the winner in the category of humor is the Meat and Potatoes of Life, My True Lit Com by Lisa Smith Molinari, published by Elva Risa Publishing. And Lisa, would you like to come up to the stage, virtual or otherwise, and uh, say a few words? Woohoo! I am so happy that this book won the Humor Award. I'm so proud of having written this book. And I also want to thank Elva Risa Publishing for all the support. We did it. We got the gold. Way to go. Thank you. So the next category is inspiration. Um, the first finalist in inspiration is Like a Shadow, 
The Life and Training of a Guardian Warrior, published by Snow Wolf Publishing. My New Kidney and Me, published by Beaver's Pond Press. And The Seasons of Divorce, Insights for Women in Transition, published by Kirk House Publishers. And the winner in the category of inspiration is The Seasons of Divorce, Insight for Women in Transition, written by Barb Greenberg and published by Kirk House Publishing. Uh, Barb, are you here? Would you like to come up to the mic? Yes, I am. Thank you so much. I would like to thank MIPA, first of all, and my wonderful editor, Connie Anderson, and Abbott's and Kirk House Publishers, and all the women who have inspired me by moving through their divorce with such grace and dignity and courage. I thank you all. Thank you, Barb. That's great. So our next category is nature. And the finalists in nature are a field, Portrait, Portraits of Wisconsin's Naturalists, Empowering Leopold's Legacy, published by Little Creek Press. The Mammals of North Dakota, published by North Dakota State University Press. And Sign Here If You Exist and Other Essays, published by Mad Creek Books, an imprint of The Ohio State University Press. And the winner in the category of nature is The Mammals of North Dakota, published by North Dakota State University Press. Congratulations. All right, moving on to the category of recreation, sports, and travel. The finalists are Crimson Arrows, a Bow Hunting Odyssey, published by Iad H. Yehawi. More Minnesota Gold, Conversations with Northland Athletes Competing on the World Stage, published by Patrick Mater. And When Do the Lions Eat? Wild and Wacky World Adventures and Encounters, published by Fusion Press. And the winner in the recreation, sports, and travel category is More Minnesota Gold, Conversations with Northland Athletes Competing on the World Stage, written and published by Patrick Mater. Patrick, would you like to say a few words? Patrick is also unfortunately not with us this evening. Oh, that's too bad. Okay. Moving along then, religion and philosophy. In that category, our finalists are A Living Islamic City, Fez and its Preservation, published by World Wisdom. Journey to the Ancestral Self, Remembering What It Is to Be Human, published by Snow Wolf Publishing. And Native, Identity, Belonging, and Rediscovering God, published by Brazos Press. So our winner in the category of religion and philosophy is A Living Islamic City, Fez and Its Preservation, written by Titus Burkhardt, published by World Wisdom. Congratulations. All right, moving right along here, the last nonfiction category tonight, social science, political science, and culture. The finalists are Coming Out, Moving Forward, Wisconsin's Recent Gay History, published by the Wisconsin Historical Society Press. From Inspiration to Activism, A Personal Journey Through Obama's Presidential Campaign, published by Little Creek Press. And The White Man Who Stayed, A Biography Remembered, published by Ice Cube Press. So the winner in social science, political science, and culture is Coming Out, Moving Forward, Wisconsin's Recent Gay History, written by R. Richard Wagner and published by the Wisconsin Historical Society Press. Congratulations. All right, now we're gonna to transition to the design categories. First one is cover design. And our finalists are, Poof, a true story about love, life, and Alzheimer's, published by Fusion Press. Spider Lake, a Northern Lakes Mystery, published by Little Creek Press. And Story of the Mongolian Tent House, published by Wisdom Tales Press. 
So the winner in the category of cover design this year is Spider Lake, a Northern Lakes mystery, written by Jeff Nania, designed by Chris Nania and Kristen Mitchell, published by Little Creek Press. Jeff, are you here? I am here. I'm on awesome. looking at Spider Lake right now. I, I, I've got to thank MIPA and Little Creek Press for all their support. The cover of my books have all been designed by my son, Chris. His abilities are incredible. I am so excited for him. Thank you guys so much. That's great. Thank you. And congratulations. All right. In the next category, illustration, our finalists are the Generous Fish, published by Wisdom Tales Press. Shelter, published by Noden Press. And Ya Heard, published by Beaver's Pond Press. The winner tonight in the illustration category is Ya Heard, written by Van Horgan, designed by Sandy Mirovitz, and published by Beaver's Pond Press. Congratulations. Okay, in the category of interior design, we have one finalist that met the judges' criteria. So the gold will be going to For Now, written by Jerry Willemek and Marley Cole, designed by Lynn Phelps, and published by Mill Studio Press. And Lynn, I believe you're here. I am. Thank you. Wow, what an honor. Oh, well, yeah, yep, I am. What an honor. I would love to thank for now's artist and publisher, Marley Call, producer and publisher, Sandy Call, poet, Jerry Willemek, and editor, Aunt Kathleen Wefflin for the genuine collaboration during the development and design of this book. My belief in design is when one has true collaboration, excellent results happen. Hey, and thanks, MIPA. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Lynn. <laughs> All right, in our final design category for the evening, total book design, our finalists are A Field, Portraits of Wisconsin Naturalists Empowering Leopold's Legacy, published by Little Creek Press. Our Gay History in 50 States, published by Wise Inc. And My Heart Grows, published by Andrews McMeal Publishing. And the winner for total book design this year is A Field, Portraits of Wisconsin Naturalists, Empowering Leopold's Legacy, written by Summer Madison, designed by Kristen Mitchell, and published by Little Creek Press. Congratulations. Can you hear me? Yep. All right. Thank you very much. I'm pleased to receive this award uh, in book design for A Field. This book took Sumner Madison 40 years to put together. Uh, it only seemed fitting and appropriate that I honor his uh, investment of time with a strong design. So thank you again. Thank you, MIPA, for this honor. Outstanding. Thank you, Kristen. Beautiful blue skies and clouds behind you there. That's nice. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to hand it off to Jennifer. Thank you, Paul. Yes, I'm ready. We're going to finish it off now with poetry and fiction. And poetry is one of our most popular categories. So let's get started here with poetry anthologies. Our finalists are Child of Dawn, Mother of Twilight, published by Yes International Publishers. And Rocked by the Waters, Poems of Motherhood, published by Noden Press. And the winner of the poetry anthologies category is Rocked by the Waters by Margaret Hess and Athena Kildegard, published by Noden Press. Congratulations. Our next category is debut poetry and our finalists are Ain't Never Not Been Black, published by Button Poetry. The Miraculous Sometimes, published by Conduit Books and Ephemera. And The Willies, published by Button Poetry. And the winner of the debut poetry category is The Willies by Adam Faulkner, published by Button Poetry. Congratulations. Adam, would you like to say a few words? 
I would be honored to. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I'm so moved by this, Mipa. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you to Javon and Meg for just writing such remarkable collections. It's an honor to sit alongside you in this, this category. And huge shout out to Sam Cook and Button Poetry for taking a risk on this book. Um, I think that the moment we're living in, right, uh, there are urgency around the stories we tell. There have never been higher stakes around the stories we tell. And thus is to say that the presses and the awards that um, dole out what they do has also never mattered more. So that this book about queerness, about whiteness, about structural racism, and thinking about the ways we can do less harm to each other as men in the world is being lifted up in this way as a Midwestern Michigan kid, uh, just means a great deal. I'm honored to be in your company. Thank you for, thank you, thank you, thank you for this award. Appreciate y'all. Love you. Thank you, Adam. Congratulations. And I did not realize you're from Michigan. I always have to give a shout out to anyone else from Michigan. All right, so moving on, our next category is general poetry. And our finalists are Gut Botany, published by Wayne State University Press. Fractures, published by University of Wisconsin Press. And Fugitive Atlas, published by Gray Wolf Press. And the winner of the general poetry category is Fractures by Carlos Andreas Gomez, published by the University of Wisconsin Press. Congratulations, Carlos, would you like to say a few words? Uh, sure, I'd love to. Thank you so much. Um, big thank you first to everyone from MIPA. Um, I wanna say first and foremost, a thank you to Natasha Trethway, whose work and example I've admired for many years. Thank you to everybody from the University of Wisconsin Press. Shout out to Adam Faulkner, one of my dearest friends. I wanna dedicate this to three different, different things I wanna dedicate this to. Number one, I wanna dedicate this um, to my amazing wife who's right here, Whitney, <laughs> and my two kids. Um, I wanna dedicate it to everybody who has remained active in the movement for uh, Black Lives, even beyond the Black Lives Matter movement of last summer. Without Black Lives Matter, this book would not exist. Um, and last, I wanna dedicate my book to every kid out there who grew up thinking they would never see their name on the cover of their book, to any Carlos Andres Gomez or somebody with another name who they never read a poet by growing up. So thank you all so much. Have an amazing night, appreciate you. Thank you, Carlos, congratulations. Our next category is regional poetry and our finalists are His Feathers Were Chains, published by North Dakota State University Press. Midwest Gothic, published by Ashland Poetry Press. And Words Like Thunder, New and Used Anishinaabe Prayers, published by Wayne State University Press. And the winner of the regional poetry category is His Feathers Were Chains, published by North Dakota State University Press and written by Denise Lajemodier. Congratulations. In our children's fiction category, the finalists are Cat Ninja, published by Andrews McMeal Publishing, The Girl Who Moved to the Town That Wasn't There, published by Siouxland Heritage Museums, and Life in the Next Squirrel Trouble, published by Beaver's Pond Press. And the winner of the children's fiction category is Cat Ninja by Matthew Cody, published by Andrews McMeal Publishing. Congratulations. In the category of children's picture books, we have three finalists. The Generous Fish, published by Wisdom Tales Press. Monica the Muskie, published by Beaver's Pond Press. And My Heart Grows, published by Andrews McMeal Publishing. In this category, we have two winners. So the first winner is Monica the Muskie by Bob Allen, published by Beaver's Pond Press. Congratulations. Bob couldn't make it with us tonight, but our next winner is My Heart Grows by Michael Arndt, published by Andrews McMeal Publishing. Michael, are you here with us? Would you like to say a few words? I am, and I would. Can you see me? Yes, you're good. Okay, great. So thank you. This is quite an honor. Thank you to MIP and the judges. Uh, thank you to my agent, Joanna Volpe and her team at New Leaf Literary. 
thank you to my editor, Patty Rice and her team at Andrews McMeal. And finally, um, and most of all, thank you to my friends, to librarians everywhere, booksellers, and most of all you, the readers who support my books. Thank you. Congratulations, Michael, thank you. In the category of fantasy, science fiction, horror, and paranormal, the finalists are Lord's Dome, published by At This Arts, Thicker Than Water, published by Henschel House, and Twisted Light, published by K.A. Patterson. And the winner of the fantasy, science fiction, horror, and paranormal category is Thicker Than Water by Jeffrey Carter, published by Henschel House Press. Congratulations, Jeffrey, I see you there. Oh, hello, thank you. This is a, a great honor. I'd like to thank everybody at MEPA. Um, I'd also like to thank my publisher, Kira Henschel, as well as my editor, Leslie Demartini, all my alpha readers. Um, I'd also like to recognize the other finalists um, for jobs well done. And um, you know, thanks again, that's it. Thank you, sorry, I, was, I, I forgot to thank my wife and daughter, but I don't wanna step in that hole, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, we cannot miss that one. Thank you very much, Jeffrey, congratulations. Now this category of graphic novels was new for us this year, so I was excited to get some good entries into this category and our finalists are Cat Ninja, published by Andrews McMeal Publishing and Icarus, published by Athos Arts. And the winner of the graphic novels category is Cat Ninja, written by Matthew Cody and published by Andrews McMeal Publishing. Congratulations. In the category of literary, contemporary, and historical fiction, the finalists are The Distance Between Stars, published by Water's Edge Press, Half the Terrible Things, published by North Dakota State University Press, and They Shot Kennedy, published by Last Kid Books, and the winner of the Literary, Contemporary, and Historical Fiction category is They Shot Kennedy by David Benjamin, published by Last Kid Books. Congratulations, David. Would you like to say a few words? Oh, yes. Hi there. Um, uh, what a surprise. Um, I have to basically say that uh, uh, the reason I can continue in all this is because I have the support of my wife, Junko Yoshida. Who, uh, has, uh, so, who has celebrated every book I've ever written, and there are too many that I've written, uh, and who, has, uh, who, was, who supported me both spiritually and materially when I decided to start my own, uh, my own imprint, Last Kid Books. Uh, so uh, th this is dedicated to Junko, thanks. Thank you, David, congratulations. In the category of mystery and thriller, our finalists are all Hollows Shadows, published by Meadowlark Press. In the House of Night, published by Poison Toe Press. And Lost Little Sister, published by North Star Press of St. Cloud. And the winner of the mystery and thriller category is Lost Little Sister by Michael Prele, published by North Star, North Star Press of St. Cloud. Congratulations, Michael, would you like to say something? I would, thank you so much for the MIPA, this means so much. Uh, thanks to uh, Curtis and Liz at North Star Press for taking a chance on this and for Ann Naris and doing a great job editing it. And to my wife, Tina, for doing everything that I didn't do while I was writing it. And today is our wedding anniversary and this is a fantastic way to celebrate. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Michael. In the category of romance, our finalists are He Lands in Palm Springs, published by John F. Shackleton. The Project, published by Hadley House Publishing. And Tirza, published by Calame Editions. And the winner of the romance category is The Project by Stacy Potter, published by Hadley House Publishing. Congratulations, Stacy. Oh my God, thank you so much, Mipa. I really appreciate it. It's an honor to receive this award for my debut novel. I'd like to thank my publisher, Hadley House, my editor, Aaron Service at Dot Dash LLC, and my husband for finally pushing me to publish this story. Thank you, judges. I appreciate this very much. Thank you. Congratulations, Stacy. And in the short story and anthology category, our finalists are 
Girl on a Float, published by North Dakota State University Press. I Have the Answer, published by Wayne State University Press. And You're in the Wrong Place, published by Wayne State University Press. And the winner of the short story and anthology category is You're in the Wrong Place by Joseph Harris, published by Wayne State University Press. Congratulations. And finally, our last category of the evening is Young Adult Fiction. And our finalists are A Time for Tears, published by Meadowlark Press. Gray Horse at Oak Lane Stable, published, published by Three Towers Press, an imprint of Henschel House Publishing and Opulence Kansas, published by Meadowlark Press. And the winner of the Young Adult Fiction category is Opulence Kansas by Julie Steelstra, published by Meadowlark Press. Congratulations, Julie, would you like to say a few words? I certainly would. And I guess I don't have any video here. I hope you can hear me. I am just delighted to be honored with this. Uh, my gratitude goes out especially to Tracy Million Simmons of Meadowlark Books, who took a chance and made this into a beautiful little book. And I also thank very much all the readers and reviewers with MIPA who gave it their stamp of approval. I'm very, very grateful and thank you all so much. Thank you, Julie. Most of the titles featured here are available for purchase in MIPA's affiliate shop at bookshop.org, an online bookstore that shares profits with independent booksellers. Take a look at bookshop.org slash shop slash MIPA. Thank you for watching. I want to encourage all of our silver and gold winners to participate in our virtual reading series, which we started last year as a seasonal literary YouTube show to highlight winners of the Midwest Book Awards. Each season will feature silver and gold Midwest Book Award winners reading excerpts from their award-winning material. We'll email winners with details on how to participate and also keep your eye out for a new longer format literary show that we're working on. Now it's time for a few congratulatory messages and of course some bloopers. Paul and Suzanne didn't even know that I was um, having this last minute issue. For some reason, my, I'm being Zoom trolled right now where I can't be uh, seen via video, but I can certainly see all you. What an honor and exciting moment it's been to be alongside each of your books and to watch each of your book covers roll by and, and just to see the beauty of your work. And each one, I mean, right, we're all doing, we're all doing our, our research and our diligence, but new open tab, new open tab, new open tab on my screen to look up each and all of you. And uh, just what a joy and what an honor. I'm, I'm really, really stoked to be amongst y'all. I've known Adam for a long time. He's an amazing human being and also a writer. But uh, Love you, baby. a big thank you to all, all the booksellers and all the librarians. As, as my wife said, she's, she's a librarian, not for 40 years yet, but, but that's the plan. <laughs> and uh, you know, I know that this past year was so disorienting for all of us. And uh, I'm just always feel grateful for all the, everyone who, who celebrates and hands people books. And, and I was just like Adam, I was like looking up books and, and it just, it, it was, it was really exciting. Thank you for the award, geez. <laughs> Taylor Stout from Minneapolis, you know, the epicenter of all the drama that's going on in the world today. <laughs> it's just kind of amazing and great to be able to be in the mix of all these amazing authors. I mean, I'm, I'm just like speechless. But as an author, no, writing LGBT history, it's, it, it was um, something that I felt called to do. And so it's, it's always great to be recognized especially outside of the um, LGBT history category. So, so to win in, uh, in, in, an, in a category that's outside of that really means a lot. Yeah, did anybody hold up Zaylor's book yet? I have it propping up my computer actually, believe it or not. I don't wanna take this, I'm gonna take it. Sorry, Zaylor. <laughs> okay, I really did have it propping up my computer. But look, this book, look how thick it is. It's hardcover, it's all color, all inside. This book, when it came in, it really caught my eye. It really stands out. Congratulations to you, Zaylor. And so Richard couldn't be here tonight, is that right? Correct. Oh, 
uh, I have never met him, but I just, kudos to him. Listen, this Barb, is, I want to do this new long format literary show. You can interview him, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Because this is his second volume on the history of gay individuals in um, Wisconsin in particular, and it's just really detailed and through time, plus I've got to give him kudos, he's donated his um, artifacts, his documents to a library. So not only did he use his material to write his own books, but it will be primary information, primary documents that others can use in, in time ahead. This is Willa, named hey, after Willa Cather. All our dogs are, are literary dogs. Uh, uh, and she wanted to know what was going on up here. And I'm looking here out at Lake Michigan. You're, that's right behind you all here. So there's the horizon line <laughs> on the other side of the car window. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. So well, you, you are can turn your view around to show us. That's right. It's raining though. Oh. Can you oh. see it? <laughs> oh wow. Not as nice yeah. anymore. <laughs> I'm in Michigan as well in the Detroit area and all week they were talking about these record storms that were coming through this weekend and I had water in my basement this morning and we have gotten a lot of water. I mean that's a normal thing that happens here in this house but what I was worried about was my power and Allison and I already had we had contingency plans for what would happen if my power went out. Thank God none of that happened. <laughs> So I saw everyone toasting in the beginning. So I ran and got water and I was like, water is going to be pretty lame. People are going to know it's water. So I put apple cider in to make it look like wine and it just looks like dirty wine. So this is apple cider and water, but. Well, now you've given away your whole trick. Exactly. Cheers. But I, I grew up in an apple orchard, so it's, a, it's an homage. So that, in, does anyone recognize, I played that same intro video that we made last year for our first um, virtual gala. I, I couldn't resist reusing that footage because I think it's so good. And also it was the same three hosts. So I wanted to reuse it again. But if we're giving away what was in our drinks at that time, I think I had a champagne glass, but it was, I didn't feel like having wine or anything like that. So there was Coors Light in the champagne glass. Fun fact. That will definitely be in the Midwest Book Awards trivia edition. Did you have a hard time setting that print file up? You're talking to me? Yes. Well, I certainly <laughs> didn't do it. I can't, I can't say too much or it will reveal uh, my judge's comments. <laughs> Are they top well, secret still? No, um, I think we, we do, do it, encourage. Do our, it, do it, do no, I was going to say we do encourage do our judges to remain anonymous. But if a judge needs to fangirl any of our contestants afterwards, I think that's OK, too. So we're getting like more entries from across the Midwest. And, and uh, I mean, if anything, I'll just take it as a compliment that people from outside the Midwest want to get in on this action too.